Marvel's got its epic crossover events, right? So why isn't there one in the NCIS universe? The franchise has one OG and three spin-offs, so the pieces for a mega crossover event are already there. And it's not just us who want it. Vanessa Lachey wants to see it happen too. So in this video, let's take a look at what the actress had to say and whether or not it's possible. Let's dive in. First up, NCIS Hawaii has already had a small crossover. Yep, and we're sure you remember this. In Hawaii's first season, members of the OG series appeared in a mini crossover, including Wilmer Valderrama, Katrina Law, Diona Reasonover, and Gary Cole. And yes, we know NCIS has done crossovers in the past, but there hasn't been one involving the OG, Los Angeles, and Hawaii in the same episode. In an exclusive with pop culture, Vanessa Lachey revealed that she'd be really excited to see the NCIS Pearl Harbor office open its doors to the original NCIS and Los Angeles teams. She specifically mentioned that she'd love to work with LL Cool J, Chris O'Donnell, and their crew, but sadly there's no word on a possible crossover between Hawaii and Los Angeles just yet. Never say never, right? But how does Lachey want the mega crossover to happen? After all, it's four shows with four different teams and personalities. How do you even make that work, even in a two-part episode? Well, she's got a surprisingly simple answer to that question, a national security crisis. She explained that the show writers would have to write something so huge that the DC and LA offices need to head to Hawaii. Perhaps they could have shared resources. Things happen where the security threat is just unimaginably huge. So DC and LA just don't have the manpower to deal with it. So who are they going to call? Jane Tennant. That's Lachey's version of the events, but what about an executive producer? Well, R. Scott Gemmell, who executively produces NCIS LA, spoke with TV Line about a possible crossover event between all the shows. The only trouble is logistics. See, if they're going to do a massive crossover, they're not going to do it between just two shows. It has to be between all three. A two-show crossover in an NCIS show feels like you're kind of leaving somebody out of the picture, like a third wheel on a date who's just staring at their phone. Gemmel's already talked to the other showrunners about the possibility, and they're all up for it. And that's great, but there's a catch. Unfortunately, every crossover ever has to deal with logistics. You know how Avengers Infinity War and Endgame were some of the biggest crossover events in a long time? Marvel pulled in every single character that had been introduced since Iron Man in 2008. And that's how it'll be for NCIS. While it won't be on that big a scale, it's still going to be difficult, expensive, and very time consuming. But what are we on about exactly? Well, longtime NCIS fans know that every show has a different style and feel to it. The special agents aren't just agents, they become a tight-knit family with their own dynamics. That's what makes NCIS so special. Every team of special agents offers something unique, whether it's DC, LA, or Hawaii, and every storyline is unique. Lachey told Pop Culture that NCIS Hawaii has the benefit of being set on an island. LA has its own thing, and the DC office is known as the mothership, the one that started it all. Plus, the other thing that would make the crossover pretty amazing is the fact that Lachey's character Jane is the first female leader of an NCIS squad in the franchise, and she said that she approaches a situation from both a position of strength and from the love of family. She's an absolute badass with a warm and fuzzy heart. Lastly, what's the final word on the mega crossover? We know Lachey's totally up for it, and Gemmel's thrown out the idea too, and we're hoping it happens really soon, maybe even next year. Seriously though, we get that logistics is a tricky thing, but shared universes like One Chicago and Law & Order have been having crossovers for the longest time. It's been pretty rare for NCIS to do the same thing. We've had many crossovers, but come on, the fans deserve an Avengers level event. So how close are we to it? Well, closer than we might think. Gamel noted that since NCIS Hawaii films on an island, it's easier for them to shuffle people out for different reasons. But another executive on NCIS, Stephen D. Binder, noted that you lose actors on a crossover. But what does that mean? Well, all the NCIS shows shoot at nearly the same time. When the OGs filmed its 20th season, Hawaii was filming its second season, and LA was filming its 14th. They happened simultaneously, and they need their actors to be on set for those specific storylines. When a crossover happens, the actors get busy filming the crossover, and so the studios need to wait for them to come back. Now, we know this sounds like bad news, but Binder didn't just end it there. He added that a mega crossover is definitely 
definitely in the cards based on how well it went with NCIS Hawaii and the OG. Jan Nash, another executive producer on Hawaii, agreed with Binder and said that the chances of a big crossover are quite high. She even noted how fun the latest crossover was when Nick Torres and Jessica Knight went to the Pearl Harbor office in Hawaii. Gemmel ended the debate by saying it's all about the right story. If the story's right and if the cast is available, then there's no reason why they shouldn't do a three series crossover. For now, we'll be waiting eagerly for Hawaii to hit CBS on September 19th and seeing what Lachey and her team of special agents have in store for us. Plus, NCIS is returning to CBS with a 20th season in September as well. So, mega crossover or not, we're just happy we're getting more from the franchise. Before we sign off, we've got a few more NCIS updates for you. First up, Lachey tells fans to buckle up for season two. Now, Jane's the first woman to lead an NCIS team in the entire franchise, right? Plus, the stories in Hawaii are going to be very different since the rest of the mainland is far away, so they're essentially stuck on an island. Lachey mentioned that the production team has access to Oahu and Pearl, and even had the military's assistance when filming intense sequences. She sort of implied that the island of Hawaii itself acts as a secondary character, and it's going to be highlighted a lot more in season two. The actress explained that she had big shoes to fill as the lead star of an NCIS spin-off. Being the first female lead in the franchise wasn't something she took lightly. So that, combined with the scale of season two, makes us think that September's going to be huge for NCIS Hawaii fans. Next, we have Wilmer Valderrama teasing that 90s show. For longtime NCIS fans who also remember Wilmer Valderrama from that 70s show, there's a huge new update. A spin-off titled That 90s Show has officially wrapped filming, and Fez is back to flirt with every woman in Point Place, even if it means going home alone. Valderrama, who's pretty psyched about the project, uploaded a photo on Twitter to show fans a sneak peek at the show. The script showed the show's logo in big block letters, and on the upper right corner, his name can be seen just above Fez's. He joked that he needs to remember the accent and added a winking emoji at the end, and we honestly cried a little, because Fez isn't the only character returning to the series. He'll be joined by Eric Foreman, Donna Pinciotti, Jackie Burkhart, and Michael Kelso. Plus, we've heard that Tommy Chong, who played Leo, will also be making a reefer smoking cameo. With the filming officially wrapped and post-production soon to follow, it's only a matter of time before Netflix announces the release date. Finally, Lachey's daughter made her feel like Wonder Woman. We'll end this video on a really wholesome note. Vanessa Lachey's awesome for more than just being the first Asian American lead in the NCIS franchise. She's a mother of three who's been in the business since the early 2000s. In an exclusive with Insider, she revealed that her seven-year-old daughter, Brooklyn, now thinks she's a superhero. She started looking at her mom in a different way the moment she saw her playing a plucky, self-sufficient special agent leading an NCIS team. She saw her mother representing women, and that made Lachey realize that it was bigger than just her children. For her, the role she plays is for all those young girls and boys who feel different in our world. She also explained that the series is moving forward in the right way by including diversity and reflecting what's happening in the real world through its stories, and she feels proud by just being a part of it. And that's a wrap, folks. Thanks for watching. So, would you like to see an NCIS mega crossover? And should it be in the form of a movie or a two-part episode? Tell us down below in the comments. And as always, be sure to hit that like button and subscribe to our channel so you never miss out on more NCIS content. See you in the next one.